Do you require magnesium supplementation? If you do, and by the end of this video, you'll have a really good understanding of the best ways that you can use magnesium in a supplement form. You'll have an understanding of why you might be deficient in magnesium, and then you'll also have some tools so that you can really optimize your body's magnesium stores. In an earlier video, I showed that a vast number of people around the country and around the world are actually deficient in magnesium. It turns out that when we look here in the United States that some 50% of adults over the age of 50 are deficient in this important nutrient. But don't think that it's just aging adults that are magnesium deficient. In 2012, a study was done in Sao Paulo, Brazil, looking at 115 university students. And what this study showed is that of these apparently healthy students, that between 17 and 33% of this student population actually had magnesium levels that didn't even make it up into the laboratory established normal range. How can this be? Now magnesium deficiency is associated with any number of different clinical conditions. So everything from migraines, depression, cardiac arrhythmias, um, muscle spasms, constipation, depression, each of these conditions has been associated in the literature with a low magnesium state or hypomagnesemia. I want to share a story with you. So a few years back I had a patient come into my practice who had really struggled with migraines for some uh, probably more than a decade and in this interim she'd seen any number of different providers who tried her on any number of different uh, medications for her migraines. Nothing had really seemed to help and to his credit her last doctor had actually checked a, m a magnesium level but he had done a serum magnesium and told her that her level was normal. We checked what's known as a red blood cell magnesium which gives a better uh, estimate of someone's tissue stores of magnesium and found out that she, in spite of having a normal serum level, actually had magnesium levels that were very, very low. So we undertook a course of treatment to fix nothing more than her magnesium. In the ensuing three months, her life was turned around. Now, I, I'm not going to tell you that her migraine headaches went away 100% because they didn't but she noticed a significant improvement of her migraines that allowed her to be much more productive and to feel better in her life. So why are we so deficient in magnesium? My name is Scott Resnick. I am a medical doctor and I am making these videos to give you the tools to take charge of your life and to make some changes to really optimize your health. I think you all are really smart and I think you want good information. So today we're talking about the best way to replace magnesium. When we look at why we are so deficient in magnesium, the first reason, and probably the most well studied, is probably just deficiencies in our diet. Too many of us are eating too much processed food or not eating enough leafy greens. So here's an interesting fact. It turns out that magnesium, while used in 300 to 400 different chemical reactions in a human, is similarly important in plants because the magnesium ion is central to the chlorophyll molecule. And the chlorophyll molecule is what makes leaves green and it's what kind of works as a solar receptor to help plants to grow. So we get our magnesium from plants, but too many of us don't eat enough plants in our diet. So I would be remiss about if I were to do this video and say, hey, y'all just go and start taking magnesium. The best way that we can really optimize our magnesium levels is to first consider getting it in our diet by eating more leafy greens. We also lose magnesium through our bowel and through sweating. So if you're someone who is working out really hard frequently, uh, it, it might be possible that you're losing a fair amount of magnesium through your sweat. And the other way of losing magnesium, which is really interesting, is uh, by the use of what's known as proton pump inhibitors. So proton pump inhibitors, AKA the little purple pills, are being sold over the counter to help decrease stomach acid. But stomach acid is required to break down the salt formations the magnesium comes in when it enters our body. And if we don't have sufficient uh, stomach acid, we're not going to be able to break down the magnesium salts. So this is a good time to begin an introduction into why does magnesium come in a salt. So remember, you'll recall from an earlier video that I did, and I'm going to link it right up here. Magnesium is what's known as a positively charged cation. There are any number of different ions in our body. When you see them written out, they come with a positive charge. So sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, all of these ions tend to favor a positive charge. 
So what happens is these positively charged ions need to be paired with a negatively charged molecule to make a salt. The most common salt that we know of is table salt, where we take sodium, which is positively charged, and match it with a chloride ion, and that makes sodium chloride, which is table salt. Magnesium enters the body similarly in a salt formation, and we need to be able to break it down. So when we start getting specific about the different possibilities and the different ways that we can utilize magnesium, we start to look into the salt. So some of the different components that we can use to make a salt are amino acids. And the two most common amino acids used in making a salt with magnesium are taurine and glycine. So the magnesium formulations you'll see are, are like magnesium taurate and magnesium glycinate. Now, taurine and glycine are amino acids, and each of these has been studied pretty extensively in having sort of an overall calming effect in our central nervous system. So if you're struggling with uh, maybe headaches, uh, maybe anxiety, uh, nervousness, restlessness, restlessness uh, these might be beneficial in augmenting some of these amino acids to keep down some of these excitable nerve impulses in your brain. The other common forms of magnesium supplements are magnesium oxide and magnesium citrate. Now, magnesium oxide is probably the simplest to make. It's really just magnesium with an oxygen molecule. Magnesium citrate uses the citrate molecule. However, it's important to note that magnesium citrate is used across the country by gastroenterologists who are trying to prep their patients' bowels for a colonoscopy. So the citrate ion seems to cause a pretty copious amount of cramping and uh, loose stools leading to diarrhea. And as we use higher doses of, of magnesium to get our body into a therapeutic range, that's not the first magnesium preparation that I generally reach for. The last category of magnesium supplements that I see are magnesium um, ions that are bound with components of what's known as the citric acid cycle. And these are molecules such as magnesium citrate or magnesium malate. Now I'm going to give you biochemistry in a nutshell because in order to make energy our body takes a glucose molecule, divides it into three, two three carbon molecules, sends it through something called the citric acid cycle where electrons are then delivered to the mitochondria to make energy. There's biochemistry in a nutshell. But the important thing is the citric acid cycle is a cycle, and there are a number of intermediaries that are the molecules that kind of keep this running. Two of those intermediate molecules are the citrate molecule and malic acid. So it makes sense if you're struggling with low energy or fatigue that the, and low magnesium, that the way to optimize your body's physiology would be to not only take the magnesium supplement, but to use one that actually incorporates these molecules that are being utilized in the citric acid cycle. As always, I like to finish up my videos with just some clinical pearls. So here are the two clinical pearls that I want to share with you for magnesium supplementation. The first is that magnesium supplements don't have all the magnesium in the capsule as it is said on the, on the label. So let's just say you're taking a magnesium oxide and it says on the label 600 milligrams. Typically the ratio is about 100 milligrams of magnesium to maybe 500 milligrams of the oxide salt. And amongst most preparations, it's about a one to four or one to five ratio of magnesium with the salt. Now I've had any number of patients who I've seen who presented to my office taking magnesium and when we, when we measure a red blood cell magnesium, they're always deficient because this is not enough magnesium to get up our total body stores because we use it so much. So I have found in my clinical practice that to really begin to raise somebody's magnesium level when measured by red blood cell magnesium, I want to use something in the range of 600 to 1,000 milligrams of elemental magnesium. And if you take anything out of the, this video, this is the most important thing. Most people aren't supplementing with enough magnesium. I can tell you it's really hard to become toxic on magnesium and to get our levels into toxic ranges unless somebody has some pretty significant kidney failure. If you've got normal kidneys, you can easily take between 600 and 1,000, maybe even 1,200 milligrams of elemental magnesium daily. The next important fact is to consider where you're getting your magnesium and in what form. I personally prefer to, re to send my patients to two laboratories that I think make really high uh, and high quality products. I like the Metagenics lab 
and I like Thorn Labs, and I give you references to access those labs in the description below. But even getting more particular, my preference is with Thorn Labs because they use a capsular form of the magnesium and not a tablet. When a tablet is pressed out in a lab, our body needs to be able to break down that tablet to get to what's inside of it. It's much easier when we have a glycerin capsule for our body to break that down and for the contents to be released. Once again, my name is Scott Resnick and I'm making these videos to give you good information. Of course, if you like these videos, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what struggles you've had, what you've learned about magnesium supplementation, and what benefits you've experienced in using this really important ion. Hopefully this video has given you some tools and tips and techniques that are really gonna help you going forward. I think you're smart, I think you want good information, and I'm gonna keep on making these videos because I think together we can become part of a community that changes how we look at medicine. All right, enough said. I will see you in an upcoming video.